Good morning, folks. Hello, sunspots. Prepare for your top science news from around the world and out into space, plus two things we hope you didn't miss yesterday. We're starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun with one mid-sized eruption on the north incoming limb. Coronal holes are relatively absent, but the active regions are not. The new one, cresting on the north, put out that eruption, which is indeed headed 90 degrees away from Earth, as you might have imagined from the SDO close-in views. So far, we are riding in B-class flare background with short spikes and a C-class range, but I'm watching for development potential behind the big sunspot on the south. Secondary umbra are forming close by, so let's check their magnetism. That bottom string is red negative, like the large umbral core except for its caboose, and the north trailer is positive blue as well. These areas where we'd have a purple collision are where the flares tend to occur. Eyes on it. Northern CME producer does look small, but it is still halfway over the limb. Let's go to some weather. Heat wave in southeastern Australia set to bring those fire dangers. Time of the year starting there. Numerous lightning deaths in Super Bowl events in Mozambique. And the snowstorm many of you heard about in Morocco should be changing to rain, luckily for the much more used to warm weather nation. Folks, we're about to see in plasma pressure. Full after-processed and intensity-based restitution of certain coronagraph bands delivers the structure of the corona and solar wind emanation in sunspot minimum, maximum, and in between. During the sunspot minimum, the most prominent feature, by the way, is the equatorial start to the sun's current sheet. Sticking with the sun, they find that the sharp decline experienced four years into solar cycle 24 is less likely to happen this cycle. They notice it as a small piece of the larger sunspot cycle puzzle, but the alternative hemispheric effects seem to keep the odd cycles peaked a bit longer. Jumping out to the moon, but only sort of. I don't suppose observers have heard of the moon holding eons of evidence of astrophysical disaster. These four want a mission expressly to go looking for it. Me too, but good luck. Folks, this is eSail's premier data release. Day one of ship tracking. Obviously, in a single observing run, they get points rather than lines across the map, but still those points seem to draw out the shipping lanes anyway. This is very high detail satellite work here. Folks, you may or may not have seen that we posted a video last night. The title may be a bit of a trap. Oh, I share what we're grateful for, all right, but that's not really all that happens in that video. Check it out. Moving on to the two top stories, which brings us to one of the many topics from last night's video. And to piggyback on the recent discovery of Andromeda's plasma halo touching our Milky Ways, they are finding that the dust needs to be extended in M31 and M33. The galaxies are much larger and more complex systems than the visible stars plus an imaginary dark matter halo. Next, we go to climate, and it's the final big analysis, review, and confirmation of what probably is the biggest climate science takeaway of 2020. The highest climate sensitivity models are completely unrealistic, specifically RCP 8.5. This was the one nature pegged as being horrendously out of kilter with paleoclimate models, and which other publications pegged as being subject to rampant CO2 oversensitivity bias. This would be the model with the numbers they use to scare people about global warming. In addition to our evening Thanksgiving video, we also hope you didn't miss this in the morning show yesterday. Not like we're leading up to anything here. Design a campground for the observers. Survival themed, communication and collaboration focused. You decide. All the details for the instructions are on that page, and the deadline is end of the month mountain time. Four winners will get $500 each, and again, link below or you could find it at observatoryproject.com. Also, folks, we have put the PDF of the textbook back up. Shipping is a beast on a four-pound textbook, especially international. Get the PDF today at otf.cells.com, where Catherine has tossed numerous Black Friday discounts on there as well. We greatly appreciate all of your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, at 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.